Are you there, Anne-Marie? Yep, I'm here. Okay, great. We'll wait a couple minutes for everybody to join us. Before we get going, um, Anne-Marie, who is our parent, uh, uh, parent educator coordinator is on this webinar today to help us with this kind of facilitating the technology and also this helping with um, the process of answering questions too. So Emory, how many we have 11 attendees right now, right? Right, and we have a total of 24. Um, but okay. I'm going to go ahead and explain some directions to parents. Um, many of you have been on our webinars before. It's great to see you back today. Um, you should each have a dashboard on your computer screen and there is a little orange hand that's at the bottom of that dashboard. If you have a question, you can either click on that orange hand or if you prefer, you can type in a question. Um, Jack will be pausing throughout his webinar to allow for questions and at that point I'll be alerting him. Um, you'll hear my voice again and I'll let him know that he has questions that parents have asked. One thing we've asked is that um, during this webinar, if you have a specific question for your executive director, so if you're with La Europa and you have a question for Robbie O'Kelly, if you're with Mountain Springs Preparatory Academy and you have a question for John Larson, specific to the um, measures that each of these schools are taking to address COVID-19 issues, we would ask that you don't ask Jack those questions because he knows what Co-op and Moonridge are doing, but each school might be doing something slightly different. Um, John Larson has joined the webinar, um, but Robbie O'Kelly was not available. So if you do have specific questions, you can type those into the question bar and I will then forward those or um, at the end, if you have specific questions for John, he might be able to answer those at that time. Um, so I'm gonna mute myself now and turn the time over to Jack so that he can present this amazing, wonderful webinar about taking care of ourselves during this kind of difficult time. So I'm gonna mute myself and go and turn it over to Jack. Uh, thanks, Emory, I really appreciate it. I'm gonna close some windows on my computer. I'm gonna put it in presentation mode. Just give me a second here. Okay. Hey, before we get going, I just want to introduce myself. I'm uh, Jack Hinman. I'm the executive director of uh, Colob Canyon and Moon Ridge Academy. And I appreciate everyone who's available to attend this webinar today. And I'm sure we'll be uh, parents who are not available will be able to access this later. And if you also want to access this later, feel free to access this too. Feel free to share it. Like I said, I'm um, like in Moonerton Collab and Mountain Springs and La Europa, we're all, we work really closely together, but also we've been working very closely with other schools locally and how to help, how to mitigate this process to how to keep our kids safe and keep our staff safe and how to support each other. And one thing I really love about what I do is this, there's some awesome people out there that are there working with kids and families and like, Oh, there's a lot of quite a few I've worked I've been consulting with like local community uh, programs to programs and like and on the East Coast to programs in Montana and I mean on, I've been on conference calls with, uh, with uh, Na uh, NATSAP which is our National Association of Therapy Schools and Programs about just coordinating efforts and how can we really help each other and so it's been really really exciting to see um, all these great people coming together, really helping each other, help really supporting our programs, supporting our families. So feel very free to share this information and I'll do the same thing too. So um, also too, um, like one of my, one of my, own, my own personal nervous twicks or ticks, whatever you want to call it, or little things I do when I get anxious is I might touch my face or I might cough. And so I wanted to just let you know I might do that. Um, I'm perfectly healthy and fine. Um, when I came into Moonridge today, I had TJ, who are, is our new program director, actually personally take my temperature and he observed me, wash my hands. And that is practices that all search programs are doing where you come in, your temperature is taking, if you have any signs or symptoms of COVID, you're asked to leave. And so, um, so yeah, so if I might cough, it's bad of just probably feeling anxious about doing this webinar today. So, um, can I think of anything else? Um, I just want to talk about um, where 
the, the framework I'm coming from about talking about self-care strategies around COVID. I'm already seeing a typo in my presentation. I missed the V in that. So you can tell I put this together pretty quickly together with the help of Anna Marie, with the help of Tani, and also my wife too. We've, like I said, it's been really great to see people coming together around this stuff. So um, where you are, and so I'm gonna be very self-conscious about touching my face today. So I apologize already. So yeah, ACT. So um, the framework I'm getting this from is from ACT. It's acceptance and commitment therapy. It's um, one of the core kind of therapeutic approaches I hold to. And it's a lot about, it's, it's, it's a different approach and spin to cognitive behavioral therapy. Traditional cognitive behavioral therapy is really about changing your thoughts, which changes your, to change your feelings, which changes your behaviors. Acceptance commitment therapy takes a bit of that and throws it out the window. I think it's a more re more realistic approach about how to how to actually cope with how you're feeling. The word acceptance is a lot about acceptance and mindfulness around your emotional experience, and we'll talk about that today. And so that's why I chose to use ACT as the approach to talk about self care strategies today. And so okay, I'll um, and Anna Marie might stop us in the middle of this um, webinar to um, to answer any questions as well. So. Okay, um, I'll hit the next slide here. And, and typically, as you're doing a webinar or a presentation, you want to kind of build up to a kind of like a conclusion or hit your most important point. I'm actually going to do the opposite today. I'm going to hit the most important point today at the very beginning because I want to make sure I get your attention at the very beginning. And that's about focusing on what you can control. It's key here. I think this is a key concept I'm going to hit over and over today is about what you can control. And, and when I do this webinar, I really want you to, to think about this, how this personally applies to you, because I'm gonna be doing the same. What I'm gonna be talking about today is something that I'm instituting in my life. It's something I'm encouraging people around me. It's something I'm having conversations with my own kids, with, with, my, with my staff, my team about these things and so this is a presentation i'll be sharing with my team it's these are concepts we talk about in our meetings and so this is really about me this is really about you and and so what and so yeah when i'm talking about this stuff this is stuff that i i'm working on stuff that i'm embracing stuff i'm instituting my life and i thought it'd be helpful to share with you too and so as soon as i get done with this webinar i'm going to shoot it off to our team here at Munich and Kolob and also the rest of the rest of the certs family as well too. So so think about yourself when we go through this, okay? Um, when we're facing a crisis such as COVID or any sort of crisis, fear and anxiety are normal. And this is key, this is crucial. What you're experiencing, what I'm experiencing, what people around us are experiencing is really normal. And it's important to, to, to tell you that, like, hey, I, it's okay to be anxious. Because that's gonna be the core part of here of working through this is the acceptance piece. And if you really understand this and you really embrace it, it's kind of a, it's, you can feel the weight off your shoulders. It's interesting where the more you accept your anxiety and your fear, the more it will less likely to take control of you. I'm not talking about feeding into your anxiety. I'm not talking about like, holding on to your anxiety. And so when we're talking about this today, I want you to think about this concept of like, like, like normally if I'm feeling super overwhelmed with my anxiety, it's kind of like feeling all, it's kind of covering my body. It's like, it's like I'm, I'm having this very enmeshed relationship with my anxiety. And when you accept your anxiety, you're kind of like, you're kind of divorcing yourself or you're kind of putting it over here and saying, hey, you're still there, but it's not part of me. It's not like, it, it doesn't have to control me. And so, like I said, in this situation, there's, like I said, COVID is affecting every part of our life. It's really super easy to get caught up in worrying and ruminating. To be honest, it hits me like it, like it right when I wake up in the morning. That's when I feel it. And then that's when I've got to get into my routine and things that I got to do to take care of myself, to get myself in a good place for for Moonridge and Kolob, for my community, for my family. And, and so it's, like I said, super easy to get caught up in that stuff and to ruminate where then you start feeling out of control. 
So this is key here. The more we focus on what we cannot control, the more we feel hopeless or anxious. Focus on what you can control, okay? We can't, can't control the market. We can't control COVID. Uh, and unfortunately, there's lots of our government we can't control either, but to just focus on what you can control because the more you focus on what you cannot control, the more you're going to get more anxious, okay? Once again, I'm speaking to myself as I'm speaking to you because these are things that I'm practicing to be in a good space so I can lead the Mutagen Cola. Okay. Um, focus. Okay. This is key here. You can't magically control your feelings. And this is what I love about ACT, acceptance commitment therapy. This is really different than cognitive behavioral therapy. And this is why I embrace it. I think it's all, also a lot more realistic. I hate when when that you you can't control your thoughts. You can't control your feelings. And that is okay. The key is knowing how to experience your thoughts and feelings. The, the, the key is like not to stop fighting your like stop fighting your thoughts around this. Stop fighting your 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 feelings around this. Like for example, I told you to not think of your don't think of like chocolate cake right now. Don't think about don't think about your favorite food right now. Of course, telling yourself not to think is actually going to make us think about that. So the key is tell yourself what to think about. So if you start getting overwhelmed, start thinking about this stuff, just coach yourself. You're going to be your coach. You're going to coach yourself in these moments where, hey, I'm going to think about this. It's okay. It's okay I'm thinking about that because it's overwhelming. This is crazy. But I'm going to think about that. Once again, having fear and anxiety is okay. And it's just like I said, it can be liberating when you, when you embrace this concept. And once again, you're going to feel really overwhelmed. But then once again, stop fighting it. Let it go through you. Okay. You can control what you do and what that matters. So you can control what you do on this stuff. So yeah, these are not this this webinar today is not gonna be like life shattering or it's not gonna I'm not gonna present a panacea or nothing special is gonna happen out of this webinar. These are just we're gonna be really good reminders for you to just yeah, good reminders about self-care. And so these are not going to be new concepts to you. But the, like I said, when I was going through this webinar today, and I've been thinking about this webinar this whole week, and like, man, what am I going to talk about? And so as I put this stuff on paper, it was great reminders for myself and my, in, the, in our teams. So um, you have more control of your behavior than you do of your thoughts and feelings. Okay, that's, yeah. And so once again, control your behavior here. And it's okay, you're okay with how you think and feel. So I really like this concept called turn the body to turn the mind. Some people believe you turn the mind to turn the body, but I disagree with this. It's a lot easier for you to change how your body responds versus how your mind responds. For example, if you're super overwhelmed, super anxious, and you want to get in a better place, Put your body in a space that is acting like it's going to be relaxed. Maybe just calm, like lower your hands or lay down on the ground or, or go like if you're super anxious, go walk. Walk like you're calm or yeah, eat like you're calm. Like whatever you're doing in that moment, just turn the body to turn the mind. And it's pretty, it, if you, once you really embrace it and get into it, you can start seeing how your thinking and your feeling will change. So it is so much easier to turn the body than turn the mind. Like, don't tell yourself not to think like, oh, I got to think better. I got to, th or I got to think less anxious. No, no, that doesn't work. I don't think it works. And so it's more about, yeah, changing your body position. Yeah. Deep breathing. Once again, that's turning the body. Um, yeah, anything, yeah, like, like a lot of the DBT distress, distress tolerance skills is turning the body. So, okay. Um, once again, yeah, focus on what you control. That's a key concept. I wanted to hit that, and that's the most important, but I still want you to be here for the rest of them, okay? Okay, acknowledge your thoughts and feelings. This is where you're going to be your coach. This is where you're going to take care of yourself. Like, have that internal dialogue. Like, hey, hey, Jack, it's okay. <laughs> you have a lot going on. Like, 
There's a lot going on outside of you. It's a lot going on outside of your control and it's okay. And you can do this. It's okay. So acknowledge, um, acknowledge what's happening inside of you. Acknowledge those thoughts. Acknowledge those feelings. This, this experience might bring up a lot of different stuff for you. Um, it brought up some stuff for me, uh, for me in my, my past about things that in, in a good way. And I reached out to some colleagues and uh, she expressed some feelings of like going through some tough times where I reached out to two colleagues that I worked with. I went through a pretty challenging Sentinel event at another school years ago and I reached out to them and said, hey, I, pre I, I appreciate your leadership at the time. I appreciate that role modeling at the time. And so it will bring up straight and acknowledge it. It's okay. Sensation urges. Man, sobriety is this is a challenging moment for sobriety. Um, we're, I just mean, think about how the key tools we use for sobriety is social contact. A meetings are being canceled. And I mean, I'm, I was sitting there thinking today where about how our technology has evolved where we can connect this way. But then, yeah, and so we have tools out there that we can connect other ways through coping. So, um, sensations. Yeah, so be aware of your body, be intact with your body, be in integrated with your body. So say to yourself, coach yourself, hey, I'm, I'm getting anxious here and it's okay. Because once again, fighting it makes you more anxious. Judo your anxiety, like, hey, it's okay. Move it around you, okay? It can be helpful to put kind of a, kind of like what it means. Like I, I put some attribution to your, your feelings, like, well, I have a lot going on. I mean, you, okay, you need to validate yourself. Um, I believe the core, the core cornerstone of emotional regulation is self-validation. And if once, once again, we're not perfect, but learning how to self-validate what you're going through. Some of you are having to, to support your family members. Some of you have Alien parents. I mean, gosh, we all, I mean, you have a business, you have all these things that you've got to worry about and that, and that is okay. You've got to be there to validate what you're going through. I'm anxious because of da, 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 da. And do that self validate and do that around, like do that around people you're around too. Um, a lot of people we come in contact with, um, the families we worked with over the years have a lot of influence. Like we worked with families that have had influence in big organizations or been public speaker, just have that. So like you are the influencers in this process too. So please take this stuff and take it with you. Take it with you in your homes and other places too. So yeah, just we, we have large, a large, large impact of people around us. Um, come back to your body, stay grounded. Um, that means once you feel, when you're feeling overwhelmed, get in touch with your senses. Like just put your hand, like, this is where I love the tips, the tip skills of DBT, um, where like, um, I remember times of like working, like I, I it was a guess not long ago, I was working with a kid and they were pretty overwhelmed and, um, and we're like, Hey, let's take our shoes off. Let's take our socks off. And it was, it was pretty cold outside. And we were walking barefoot in the water and the ground was really cold, but it really, it captivated my attention and it captivated that kiddo's attention. It, it kind of like brought us right into the moment. And so things you could do with your senses to bring you the moment, like take a cold shower or a warm shower, whatever you do, just to kind of bring yourself grounded physically, use your senses. I mean, those are the things that are like, are the most, um, unfortunately, our kiddos that your kids, the kids we work with, use unhealthy ways to try to stay grounded. That's where self-harming comes into play. And so, but we can flip it on its head and, and use the same way in a way it's healthy. Um, and so, um, yeah, uh, chewing on cold ice or drinking some warm coffee, that kind of stuff. Things are just, things that are creature comforts to you that can ground you are really important right now. <clears throat> Stay integrated, which means like be aware of this 
keeping all your parts of yourself, your body, your mind, your thoughts kind of together. And it can be easy to zone out. On a, on a, on a non, non-clinical way, it looks like disassociation for people that have trauma, but on, on a, I'm sorry, on a clinical way, it looks like disassociation, but on a non-clinical way, it could be zoning out, like this is zoning out, right? And so the key is when you start feeling like you're zoning out, um, there's other ways you can kind of take breaks. So zoning out is different than taking breaks. When you start just feeling disconnected with yourself, that's not good. But you can want to take a break and just listen to the, the music, that, that's okay. But just be aware of kind of like being grounded. Um, in good ways, just put your feet on the floor, straighten your back, do stretches. I love the, um, gosh, I forgot the name of it, but where you do kind of progressive, like you tension your muscles and let go, tension, let go, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm a big Apple fan. I love my Apple Watch. Um, I will do where I will use my Apple Watch to do breathing. Um, yeah, so just things that you can kind of just get connected to stay, stay grounded. Um, I don't know if it's on the slide and maybe it is, but just like, yeah, anchoring yourself. I think it's a big, I think it's in here somewhere. Um, engage what you're doing. Get a sense of where you are and, re, and refocus your attention on the activity you're doing. Man, holy moly. Like I've, uh, there's moments and times I've struggled with this where I'm, I go home at the, like I'm getting at home and, and, and people are talking to me and I'm not engaged. I'm not engaged. Like I'm, I've, I've got to be on here at Moon Ridge and, we, and John does and Robbie does. We ought to be on here. And then, man, we've got to be on it when we get home too. Where, and that's been a, a little bit of a challenge for me too, where I'm going to start, I just sit there in this, I'm kind of in another world. And so I've got to just ground myself and like, and then what I do is I just repeat back to me what my wife is saying or what my kids are saying that too. And, and so it's, yeah, it's, it's important to be engaged and just be in the moment. Um, once again, focusing on your senses. I love this. Dropping the anchor is a, is a uh, ACT or ACT kind of like tool. It's this kind of just anchoring yourself with things. And what kind of brought up for me was like focusing on what I feel secure about right now. Um, I feel secure about the people I'm working with. Um, and I'm sorry if I get emotional on this webinar today. Um, yeah, sorry. Just thinking about like TJ, I'm thinking about um, um, all these awesome people. I'm thinking about Robbie and John and like literally, and so we have, we've been coordinating, helping each other on things and um, yeah, just focus on what those, I feel secure. I feel really good about um, the team here. I feel good about the kids. Like um, it's, yeah. And so I feel really, I feel secure about the love I have for my family. I feel secure for the love of the work we do. Um, and and so that's just so just land on what you feel secure when you start feeling unraveled and and that kind of just bring it back to like what you feel solid in okay and you and that might be, be hard to do that but yeah and i think yeah that's really helped me a lot that's why i threw it on here and so on this link we'll get it to you um is some really great anchoring kind of concepts we can share with you um Committed action. Um, this is where the rubber meets the road, and it's really important. And so, I um, sorry, I got some here. Um, let's see here, and where I'm going to go through some series of questions right now for you guys, and these are for myself too. So I'm going to pause and think about um, like how this applies to me, and I want to think about how it applies to you too. Okay. What are the simple ways to look after yourself? And if you're with somebody right now, which I don't know if you're with, with, your, with your spouse or with your kiddos or whatever, just say that. Like, I want you to think about if you're with your, yeah, by yourself or something, please share that with another person right now. What are the simple ways you're looking out for yourself? Um, one of the simple ways I'm looking out for myself right now, it's interesting. <laughs> Is that I'm eating better than I've ever ever eaten in a while. Eaten, gosh, I can't even speak. I, I'm eating better, basically. Where I'm taking advantage of like, like really focusing on uh, all the like like fresh produce and taking like. Well, there's also great 
farm here in, in Cedar City. And my wife's a school teacher, so she's home. So she went to a farm today to get like fresh fruits. And so that's kind of what we're doing to take care of herself. It's a good way to connect to my family about cooking. So cooking has kind of been a really interesting or awesome concept what I'm doing in my family. Um, so what are the type of things you're doing to take care of yourself? Um, yeah, I music is a huge thing for me. There's some cool things are popping up where there's live concerts that are happening. I, um, I had a chance to see um, like there was like there, there were really short little little um, shows last night on there was like unfortunately the South by Southwest concert in Texas was canceled but they did some live shows last night people from their like from performers from their home and for example like Paul Simon and Edie, Edie Perkel was performing with Woody Harrelson yesterday it was like that's pretty cool and so listening to music has been something I've been really really embracing so and then also too, how can I be kind to myself I want you to think one thing right now is how you can be kind to yourself and others around you. Okay. Sorry. Um, always, like I said, in this line of work, my phone is always on. So it's just part of what I what we have to do. So um, yeah. And yeah, like how can you be kind to yourself? Like it's interesting. I, Gretchen Rubin is one of the uh, folks I really like. She has the, um, I can't remember, it's the 10% Happier or Happiest Project. And and she talks about her shower being like her fortress of solitude. Like we think of like Superman, like he, like his fortress of solitude is a place where, and so my shower is my fortress of solitude where when I'm in there, only good thinking's happening. Like I'm in there talking to myself internally and I'm sitting like, this is where, I'm thinking like good thoughts about myself. Yeah. Um, now, let's see, sorry. Um, now, what are you finding to be the most effective way to spend time at home? Now, this is, I would love for you guys who are on this webinar today to email me and I'd like to hear kind of the effective ways you're spending time at home. And that's a cool thing about social media is like where my sister-in-law was doing with her kids like some funky stuff too. And so what are you guys doing here? And and we're also being creative too here. We went and got some more art supplies and we're sharing ideas with each other how to like make fun, make it more fun at our schools too. So um so what's the yeah, what are you doing to find the most specific way to spend time at home? Um gosh, that's a good question. How do I answer that for myself? Um playing games. Um we've been playing like I've been playing games. That's all I do. Um so another thing too I want to hit is do you have a schedule for yourself um, where this is key. This is being really key for me where um, no matter what, I get up at a certain time and I go bed at a certain time and to keep yourself from routine. And having those routines are going to keep you, keep you stable, keep you structured. It's exact, these are things that we do with your kiddos, we want to do, we want you to do as well too. Because right now, when some, a lot of you are having to work from home or your schedules are all crazy, it's so easy to get out of routines where we're sleeping in late or we're going to bed late or we're on our phones to like late at night, obsessively checking the news or this, that, and the other, or then watching our, our favorite like TV show. And it's really important for you to get adequate sleep. I mean, this is something of value that's really, really important to our kids and ourselves too. Yeah, so stick to awake and bed bedtimes. That's what I'm doing. That's been really helpful for me. And I stick to a schedule um, where, um, yeah, so if you're, if you're working from home right now or not, exercise and cardio is part of your job. That's, that, that's kind of a concept that hit me where it's like, no, no, like, like, right now it is so it is it is more crucial right now for me jack to get my workout in before i go to work because i know that i am um i'm in a better place emotionally i'm more cognitively sharp um, i'm able to take things in perspective i am able to problem solve more effectively i can see things around me and so i've made it part of my job it is like it is part of my job to work out 
Um, and, and, and it's like, it's like where I have to check my email in the morning. And so exercising is like a part of that too. And so for me, um, I, I cycling is huge. I love the bike. It's been a core passion in my life. It's who I connect. That's how I connect with other people. And I've got a trainer at home and, and I do this thing called Zwift and it's crazy how many people are doing it. You can see virtually see all these people doing it. So it's pretty cool from that standpoint. So yeah. So making, working out part of your job. Once again, focus on what you control. And, and I tell myself, it's really, it seems really basic. Like I can control, I can, I can control myself exercising. I can control myself going to bed on time and I can control, control those things. So Gretchen Rubin, who's also about outer, outer, outer order, inner calm. She's all about these things. And if you, it's so interesting. You, I love podcasts, Tim Ferriss, all these other people about, how what they I just love understanding the routines other people to do to be successful. And one thing I one thing I hear I hear routinely from like successful professionals is making their bed. And I love this concept where like I mean, it's it's so I mean making your bed is so impactful. It gets me into that mindset of like being organized and 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 also holding myself like holding myself accountable like because I can, I can easily take the way out and not make my bed, but little things like that. So continue. I can control to make my bed. I can continue to floss my teeth. And so stay focused on what you control. Um, this one hit me too. I, I always, I've always wanted to play the guitar. And um, so maybe like things that you've, things you haven't done in a long time, where you haven't played the guitar. You maybe it's a favorite book you haven't read. Or like maybe there's some passions of like being like writing poetry or painting, um, those kind of stuff. Like like pick up those habits. I mean, I just have those old hobbies you've let go of that maybe work got in the way. And this is an opportunity to really tap into that. I really want to talk about drinking, alcohol consumption for um, for everyone. This is really important, I think, and it's I think it hopefully it will catch storm and people will talk about it where where i think it's easy to to cope with alcohol at night and like one glass leads to one bottle of wine and then it leads to daily after day and, and then it becomes a big pattern in your life um i mean i'm 45 i'm getting older and we're all getting older here and and alcohol has bigger impacts on us and i really it's important to be aware of like the alcohol or alcohol consumption it's really important to be aware of like how it affects our processing speed, how it affects our anxiety. Like I guess this is really anxious moments and it's easier to like, oh, I just want to just tap out. I want to take a break from thinking and just chill with a glass of wine right now. But man, but, I, but it does, it can affect the next day. And so I want you to think about that. It affects us being sharp, it affects our anxiety. So just be careful with drinking out there, okay? Um, this is Gretchen Rubin stuff, Outer Order Intercom. I love her stuff. I love her, like her podcast. She's been doing a daily uh, Instagram with her, I think it's her sister. Um, just simple stuff. Like I said, we don't have to make it complicated. And so if you have a, look her stuff up, she has a book called Outer Order Intercom. It's the simple tricks where about keeping your home. Like I think it's easy to like get out of, out of habit where we're sweatpants all day and let all the dishes lay out on your countertops and it's important to keep your house clean where because we we there's like our, the way our brains work we're processing so much information so there's a lot of stuff on your counters your brain is like processing that and that processing if it, that takes to over processing and so for example Barack Obama what he did during right when he became into his presidency he he was really he I think he's talk to uh, people who are special in cognition, he wanted to limit, he understood bandwidth, mental bandwidth. And so he wanted to eliminate decisions he did not have to make so he can make big decisions. And so far as I know, he didn't, he never, he had like two colors of suits. So he never had to choose what he had to wear. He never chose what he ate. So he was like, well, things that don't really matter, I'm not going to eliminate that. So our brains work the same where, where you're processing. So the, the key is like, Lower your bandwidth. Like you're, we only have so much bandwidth, and right now, COVID is tapping or is, is taking or it can be, is taking a big chunk of our bandwidth right now. So 
And also that's what you can control. You can control cleaning your house. You can control keeping things organized. I love the one minute rule. And I'm trying to, I've been like, I've been trying to hold myself accountable with the one minute rule. And, and, I, and so one minute rule is if you can do it in a minute, do it. Like, and so if you can hang up a shirt, do it. Just things like that. Like this, those things that will help your inner calm. Taking control of your possessions helps us take stock and reflect the rest of our lives. So just clutter, cleaning list that I mean, you'd be surprised how that can create a lot of calmness. The tiniest of our external surroundings can have a bigger impact on our inner peace. Okay. Um, slow down your body and slow down your car. I, this came, this, I thought this, this hit me um, when I was, backing out of my driveway this a couple of days ago and going where man like this is a part that scares me about our time too is that i think there will be an increase in accidents and people making mistakes because our bandwidth is being tapped right now and so it's important for you just to slow down once again turning the body will turn your mind slow down your car drive safe be present when you're driving because like accidents can happen, okay? So I just wanna throw that out there, okay? Um, opening up. Yes, we always want you to be vulnerable and open up and people around you and talking that kind of stuff. This is more being opening up internally, making room for difficult feelings and being kind to yourself. Once again, it is okay with how you're feeling. So the main concept for you, if you're gonna get today was it's okay. The more that you're okay with how you feel, the more it will go through you. Um, and this is where I love letting go of the rope. And this concept is really impactful to me. And I love, I've used it so many times in individual and group therapy. And where you think about a, a rope, think about you being on one end and think about your, your fears, your anxieties on the other end. And the more that you fight it, when you, and you're in tug of war with those feelings, we're just, I'm, I'm fighting, I don't want to feel this way, I don't want to feel this way. And when we're in that, what's one option we always forget to do is to let go of the rope. Um, doesn't mean the rope disappears. Does it, you just, you're just changing your relationship with your anxiety. Doesn't mean your anxiety disappears. You're just like, hey, hey, overwhelming anxiety, you're right here, I see you. And, and it just, yeah, just changing that relationship. Um, so also too, and all these things, in an event of emergency, put on your mask first. This is a key concept. Once again, these are not concepts that I created or nobody, I mean, these are brand new, we all know them, but these are good reminders where take care of yourself out there. Like, um, it's really important. This stuff here, will help permeate the people around you. Like you, like we'll able to impact the people around you. And your self-kindness is your oxygen here. What you say to yourself, how you coach yourself. And I want this right now for a couple, sorry, I'm touching my face again. Um, I want everybody to think of like a parent or a coach or somebody who, who is super kind. And sometimes like when, a lot of times when we, when I'm work, when we're working with kids where they can't be kind to themselves, but man, helping them tap into who they, who that was kind to them or a coach or, or their own parent. So just, if you, in those moments and times you can't be kind to yourself, think about that person who was kind to you and what would they say to you, okay? Um, values. I want you to think about like um, where because values don't fly out the window. Like no matter how bad things get, we who we are should not change our core values. And I want everybody to think for a minute about like, what are your core values right now? And and like I said, there'll be some like there like there there'll be some great things will come out of this. And uh, I think we'll maybe tap us into and tap into those things, our core values. Tap things are what are important in life. So no matter what happens, like what do you, what kind of person do you want to be? And man, I had a really great conversation with um, with a uh, person who works at a wilderness program, 
and uh, Renee, and he really tapped me into that stuff. Like I've been reaching out to my all my um, all my colleagues out there, and like yeah, like, like Craig and Ruth and all these people I'm thinking about, and like like I said, John and Robbie and Kent and man, and just having these conversations where um, yeah, who do you want to be? And because like I said, no matter what happens, like I can still love, respect, humor. Those things are important. So just think about your values. Like it's also about in these times okay look at ways to pass it out there spread that spread your values out there to people so as the crisis unfolds there'll be all sorts of obstacles goals like i said there'll be things in the way things that we can't control but who you are as a person does not change okay and, you, and your kids will see that um people around you will see that um, I love this picture. Can't get rid of your fears, but we can learn to live with them. And those fears, like I said, I like to think visually. I can see it like kind of, kind of like a big blanket that's wet and it's kind of like covering me, and I can feel suffocated by my fears. But then I just kind of like, okay, I'm gonna take this blanket off, put it over here. Like I said, that blanket doesn't disappear; it's still there but my relationship is differently. So in this picture, it says more T. Like, hey, I'm, not, I'm changing, I'm moving away from this adversarial relationship with my, my fears. So um, I just wanna tell you, I appreciate um, you and appreciate this time to do this. Um, it was, I really enjoyed doing this today. Um, it really taps me into what I love about what we do. Um, it was really great to reflect on these things, um, to get other people's opinion about this webinar. Um, and I just appreciate this, the, the trust you have in all of us from 